And we are looking at the probability distribution. <clears throat> and the last thing we did was probability T for the dependent, I mean for the yeah, dependent variables. So now let's proceed. That was number one. We're looking at the probability distributions. And we did probability T for dependent variable. Number two, I want us to look at Poisson distribution. Poisson distribution. Poisson distribution. We right to see that. This is a distribution technique. This is a distribution technique. This is a distribution technique. Used to analyze situations, used to analyze situation, used to analyze situations, used to analyze situation, where events takes place in large numbers, where events takes place, where event events takes place in large numbers within a short interval where the events takes place in large numbers within a short interval within a short interval eg eg custom uh, customer arrivals customer arrivals comma number of vehicles passing a highway Number of vehicles passing a highway, ETC. Number of vehicles passing a highway, ETC. It's computed as follows. It's computed as follows. It's computed as follows. Yeah, how do we determine probability when the items are poison distributed? So to get the probability, it will take exponential raised power negative lambda times lambda raised power x divided by x factorial, where, where, what's a, what's lambda, what's x, what's that? So it means exponential, exponential constant. This means the average of the mean or the variance. X is a specific number and this means factorial. And this exponential constant is 2.7183. Can I write to that? Take out your calculator. Take out your calculator. So how do we get factorial? Now this I'll get the factorial. Press shift and the button below shift. Shift and the button below shift. And this is factorial? Good. Uh -huh. I said you press shift, then the button below the shift. Then how do we get this exponential E? Press shift, shift, then natural log. This is what you call natural log. Eh? Now, where you have on, can you see where you have on? Where you have on, let me see this. Good, now where you have on, below on we have the cube root, then below it we have 
I n. Can you see I n? That's what you call the natural law. Press that. What do you get? E. Then press one equals one equals. What do you get? Do you get 2.7183? Okay, let's repeat again. Press shift. Then you press this natural row, I N. You press that natural row. Shift natural row. I've said that natural row is where you have on. Below on, you get the cube root. Then below cube root, that's where you have I N of the natural row. And you get E. Then you press one equals. One equals. Good. So that's how you get the exponential constant. And I said that to get factorial, you are pressing shift and the button below the shift. Illustration, illustration. Now open with me, May 2018, question 5A. May 2018, question 5A. May 2018, question 5A. And we are told that an electricity company has established that the weekly number of currents of writing striking transformer follows a poison distribution with a mean of 0 0.4 per week with a mean. Yeah, I say that mean is the same as Rabda, eh? a mean of 0 0.4 per week. Then we are told that required. The probability that no transformer will be stuck by writing in a week. Probability that no transform will stuck in a week. Remember I told that it follows Poisson distribution. I say that and the Poisson distribution, to get probability, you will take A negative lambda times lambda raised to our X over X factorial. Now in this case, what we need is X and our X in this case is zero because we are told that the probability that no transformer will be stuck by writing it. So our X is zero. So therefore the probability will be you take exponential raised power negative lambda. So our lambda is the average of current 0 0.4 times you take lambda, which is 0 0.4 raised power x. Our x is zero divided by x factorial. x is zero, so it's zero factorial. Now this is what you do. Uh -huh. I want us to put E, shift, natural log, shift, you press this natural log, you get A. Now, write raised to power negative 0 0.4, raised to power negative 0 0.4, raised to power negative 0 0.4 equals, you get syntax error, right? Uh, let's repeat again, press on. Press shift. And you press this natural log, I N. Then negative 0 0.4. Negative. Don't write this power. Just write negative 0 0.4 equals. You multiply by 0 0.4 raised to power 0. 0 0.4 raised to power 0. Divide by 0 factorial. We have said that 0 factorial, you press 0 then shift the button below shift. That's where the factorial is. Equals, what do you get? Get?
¿Qué? <laughs>
So I think now we are okay. So I can do another illustration, but for the online student, the sound was not good. So let me do an extra question. May 2017, question 2B. Now, question two, be I told that. Bewanda Limited is a company that operates in the printing industry. The company has a total of 30 machines that operate 24 hour cycle. The probability of a machine breakdown in any given day is 0 0.015. So the probability of machine breakdown on any given day is 0 0.015 required. The probability that exactly four machine breakdown in a given day using Poisson distribution, using Poisson distribution. I say that. And the Poisson distribution probability is equals to exponential raised power negative lambda 
then so lambda raised power x over x factorial. Now in this case, how much is our lambda? The average. We see that lambda is average. We are told that we want a limited operator company. A limited is a company that operates the printing machine. The company has a total of 30 machines that operate at 24 hour cycle. So we have 30 machines. Then we do that. The probability of machine breakdown in any given day is 0.015. So on average, how many machines do you expect to break down? Zero point? Zero point four five. Now the question is, the probability that exactly four machine break down in a given day, exactly four. So that means probability where X is equals to four. So it will be P is equals to E, that's the exponential, raised power negative lambda, or lambda is negative 0 0.45 times, we take the lambda which is 0 0.45, raised power x, our x in this case is four, divided by four factorial. Give me that. So you say that E, you press shift natural log, shift natural log, then don't write raised to power. If you use that E, you don't write raised to power. Can you do this? Press on, I want you to do this. Can you take E raised to power negative five? Can you do that? E, you press shift, natural log, raised to power, raised to power, negative five, raised to power negative five equals, what do you get? Error, good. Why do you do that? Now, you see where you have the natural log, uh -huh. upper you are given E raised to power X. So it's already raised to power. So don't write raised to power. So this is what you do. Can you press on? E, you press shift, natural row, shift, natural row. Now don't write raised to power because E is already raised to power. You press negative five, negative five equals. What do you get? Yes? Okay, do this. Now, can you take 2.7183 raised to power negative five? Remember, you see that E is the exponential constant, which is 2.7183. 2.7183 raised to power negative five. I'm hoping you're getting the same answer, right? Good. So if you decide to use E directly, don't write raised to power. If you decide to use this 2.7183, that's when you write raised to power. Uh -huh. So in this case, so can you take E, shift natural log, then negative 0 0.45 equals times 0 0.45 raised to power four divided by four factorial. We see that to get four factorial, you press four, shift and the button below shift shift and the button below shift. That's how you get factorial. What do you get? Yeah, 0 0.001. So I want us, we add something else. I want us, we add something else. Can you write number two in your question paper? Number two. I want you to add something, not that one which is required. So all, listen here. What if now we want the probability? That's not part of the question. Probability of at least, of having at least three breakdowns, at least three breakdowns, at least three breakdowns. Yeah, what's the probability of at least having three breakdowns? Good, now let's be here. So to get at least three is probability that X will be greater than two. That means at least three, that means it's three, four, five, blah, 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 blah. Up to that, remember we have that machines, which is, the, uh, which is the same as doing this. Eh? You take the probability, remember probability should always equal to one. 
you take one minus zero, one, and two. No breakdown, one breakdown, two breakdown. If you get this probability, then you take one minus that, now you'll get three, four, five, six, and which this is the easier one. So in this case, it will be probability is equals to one minus when X is zero. So it will be E, average does not change 0 0.45, 0 0.45 times 0 0.45 raised power X, our X is zero, divided by zero factorial, or E, negative 0 0.4, Uh -huh. You multiply by 0 0.45. Now, in this case, x is 1 raised power 1, 1 factorial, or when x is 2, so it will be e negative 0 0.45 times 0 0.45. Now, in this case, our x is 2, so it's 2 over 2 factorial. So it will be 1 minus, others do the first one. To do the second one, others to do the third one. <clears throat> Which one? The first one, eh? Zero point six, six three eight. Sorry? Eight, seven. Eight, seven. Uh -huh. The last one. Good. So now give me the probability. You take one minus that. You get 0 0.01, 0 0.01, good. So you can copy now.
Now we look at the third distribution, exponential distribution. Exponential distribution. We like to say that is the process of which is the process in which is the process in which events occur continuously. It's the process in which events occurs continuously. Is the process in which events occurs continuously at a constant average rate 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 eg 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 time taken to serve a client in a bank time taken to serve a client in a bank comma hotels hotels hospitals Hospitals, ETC, ETC. Yeah, in short, it's all about how we offer service, the rate at which we offer the services. It's computed as follows. It's computed as follows. It's computed as follows. So to get P uh, that is greater than T, this means greater than. So the probability will be equals to E is for negative ut probability of being less than is less than so it will be p is equals to one minus a raised for negative ut probability of being in between probability is equals to e ut one minus a ut2 where where what is u what is t then what is t1 what is t2 u is the service time and how do we get the service time it's one over the mean time and over the mean time t is the specific time t1 is the minimum time t2 is the maximum time We can do an illustration. Hand out page Now, page five, there is that question on exponential distribution. That is that the time taken by a cashier in a certain bank to serve customer is believed to follow an exponential distribution with a mean of 15 minutes. So the mean time is 15 minutes. So therefore, to get the service time, and our service time is you, we said it's one over the mean time. So it will be one and the mean time it's 15. So our service time is one over 15. 
Determine the probability that a customer will be served for a period of number A, at most 10 minutes. At most 10 minutes. At most means, is it maximum or minimum? At most. So does it present greater than or less than? So that means less than. So probability is equals to one minus A minus UT. So it will be one minus, you take the exponential constant minus U, our U is one over 15 times T. Here you want at most 10 minutes, maximum of 10. So you should take less than that. So it's less than, so give me that. So this is what you do. You'll take shift natural log, you get E. Shift natural log, you get E. Then you open the bracket, open the bracket. Negative 10 divided by 15. Negative 10 divided by 15. Close the bracket. Equals one minus the answer. One minus the answer. Zero point. Number B of the question. Mm -hmm. Between 12 and 20 minutes. So between 12 and 20 minutes. So between 12 and 20 minutes. So how do we get the probability of that? Of you being served for between 12 to 20 minutes. So you say that in this case, to get the probability, you take E, U T1 minus E U T2, where T1 is the minimum time, that's 12. T2 is the maximum time, which is 20. So it will be E U, it's one over 15 times T1, which is 12 minutes. Then you minus E raised power negative one over 15, T2 is 20 minutes. So you say that you take E, you press shift natural, open the bracket, a negative 12 divided by 15, close the bracket equals, what do you get? Zero point four five minus. Can you do the second one? Do the second one. Zero point. Zero point two six, eh? Zero point two six, uh huh. Zero point one, good. Then lastly, number C. Number C, more than eight minutes. More than eight. To get more than eight minutes, that's a probability of being greater than. Greater than. You see that in case of greater than, the probability is equals to E minus UT. So it will be E, U is one over 15, T, you'll take more than eight minutes to be served. So what's the probability that you'll take more than eight minutes to be served? Zero point into two decimal places. Two decimal places. Zero point five nine. So you can copy.
So that was the that distribution. Let's look at another distribution. Binomial distribution, number four is binomial distribution. Binomial. We like to see that. This is a discrete probability distribution. This is a discrete probability distribution. This is a discrete probability distribution. Used to analyze situations, used to analyze situations, used to analyze situations which satisfies the following condition used to analyze situations, which satisfies the following condition, which satisfies, which satisfies the following condition. Number one, number one, number one, it satisfies the following uh, condition. Number one, experiment having only two outcomes, experiment, having only two outcome, which is success or failure, which is success, which is success or failure, which is success or failure, full stop. Success, success is the occurrence of interest, success is the occurrence, success is the occurrence, Success is the occurrence of the interest to the researcher. Success is the occurrence of the interest of the interest to the researcher. Yeah, your interest is what we call the success. Number two, another condition, number two, number two. Probability of success, probability of success, probability of success probability of success remains remains constant in all trials probability of success remain constant in all trials such that such that such that such that if you take the probability of success plus the probability of failure should always give you one such that, you write that, that if you take the probability of success plus probability of failure, you should always get one. Mm -hmm. And then number three or number C, number three or number C, trials, trials are completely independent of each other. Trials are completely independent, independent of each other, independent of each other. Other. Yeah, those are the three conditions to be satisfied for you to apply the binomial distribution. We write another paragraph, we write to see that. If the above condition are satisfied, if the above condition are satisfied, if the above conditions are satisfied, comma, the probability of getting X success, the probability of getting X, X success, when N trials, when N trials are done, when N trials are done, is as follows, is as follows, is as follows. So to get the probability, you'll take N combined X times P raised to power X times Q raised to power N minus X, where what is P? P is the probability of success. 
Q, it's one minus probability. N is the total number. X is a specific number of interest. C is combination. C is combination. C is the combination. So I think that P is the probability of occurrence of the success and Q is one minus probability. Then NCR, in our last session, I sh showed you some technique on how to get combined. Can you give me 10 combined three? Give me 10 combined three. I showed you combination and permutation. 10 combined three. One, one, 20. Remember you said that you press 10, for those who don't remember, 10, then you press combine. Combine where we have shift, don't press shift. We have shift, then we have alpha. Below the alpha, that's when we have NCR. That's what you call combined. So it's 10, you press that button of combine, three, you get 120. So now let's do some illustration. November, 2019, November, 2019. November 2019, question 1B. November 2019. Question 1B, part one. Part one or part two. Yeah. November 2019, question B. So we are told that six consultants works for XYZ Limited. So N, it's six consultants. A consultant has a 20% chance of being absent from work in a given day. So the probability of being absent is 0 0.2. Therefore, how much is Q? Say that Q is one minus P. So it would be one minus 0 0.2, and you get 0 0.8. Yeah, a consultant has a 20% chance of being absent from work in a given day. The company needs to establish the probability of more than two consultants being absent from work the probability of more than two being absent from work. Required, compute the above probability of absence, assuming number one is binomial distribution, use binomial distribution. Now, in this case, we want to determine the probability where the number of those absent is more than two. Remember, we have six. Remember, we said that probability should always equal to one. If you want more than two, so it's either three, four, five, or six which is the same as taking probability, you take one minus probability of X being one minus zero, one, and because this one is more than two, more than two, that means what? Three, four, five, six. So therefore it's either zero, one, and two, we take one minus that. And how do we get the probability? Using binomial distribution, I said that to get the probability, you'll take NCX, times P raised power X times Q N minus X. So it will be one minus. Now we start when X is zero. When X is zero, it will be N. There are six consultants. You combine zero times P. Probability of being absent is 0 0.2 raised power X. X is zero times Q. Q is 0 
n minus x, you just take six minus zero, you get six. Or we use plus. Now, when x is one, it will be six combined one, probability does not change, it's 0 0.2 raised to the power one, then q, q is 0 0.8. 0 0.8, you take six minus one to get five. Or also when x is two, when x is two, it will be six combined two, probability is 0 0.2 raised to the power two, times q it's 0 0.8, then you take six minus two and you get four. So it will be one minus, so can you do this? Six <clears throat> combine zero equals times 0 0.2 raised to power zero times 0 0.8 <clears throat> raised to power six, 0 0.8 raised to power six equals, what do you get? Two six? Two. Now, can you do the second one? Others do the third one. Which one? The second one is zero point? Three nine two. Mm -hmm. Three nine three. The last one you are getting two, four, five. Good. So now give me the probability. Take one minus that. May 2017, question 2B, part 2. May 2017, question 2B, part 2. Now you're told that the Wanda Limited is a company that operates in the printing industry. The company has a total of 30 machines. So X is equals to 30 that operate a 24 hour cycle. The probability of machine breakdown in any given day, that's the probability. Probability of breakdown is 0 0.015. So to get Q, Q is one minus T. So it would be one minus 0 0.015. You get zero point. Nine, nine, eight, five. Required. Now let's go to number two, number two of the question. The probability that exactly four machine breakdown in a given day using binomial distribution. Exactly four breakdown. Probability that X is equals to four. So that probability is equals to N C X P raised to power X Q N minus X. And we have that machine combined exactly four. X is four, probability is 0. 0, 0.015 raised to power x, our x is 4, times q, our q is 0 0.985, then you take 30 minus 4, of which you get 26, and you get your probability. So you can copy now.
Stand out. I want us to do another illustration from the handout. Handout page six. And out page six. There is that question on binomial distribution. So we are told that Supercut, a beauty salon in Subukia, offers a full refund to any customer who is not satisfied with the way his or her, uh, his or her hair looks after it has been cut or styled. The owner believes the hairstyle satisfaction from customer is independent and that the probability a customer will ask for a refund is 0.2. So probability of asking for a refund is 0.2. Therefore, Q is 1 minus P, which is 1 minus 0.2. You get 0.8. Good. Then you are told that if the condition of binomial distribution holds, number A, find the probability of less than three refunds request from eight randomly selected customer. A, we want find the probability of less than three. Less than three, that means it's probability that X is either zero, one, or two. That's what it means, of less than three. Less than three, it's either no one will ask for a refund or one or two. And how do we get the probability? So probability is that it's n c x p raised to our x q n minus x. So it will be n to that. Find the probability of less than three refunds request from eight randomly selected customer. So we have n is eight combined when x is zero. Probability is zero point two raised to our x, which is zero. Q is zero point eight, so it will be zero point eight eight minus zero you get eight or now when x is one, so it will be eight combined one, then probability is 0 0.2 raised to power one, q is 0 0.8, eight minus one, and it will get seven, or that's plus eight. Now when x is two, so it's eight combined two times 0 0.2 raised to power x, which is two, then 0 0.8. 8 minus 2, you get 6. So it will be, I'll uh, have do the first one, the second one, and the third one. The third one, uh, zero point three two nine second. Zero point three six. The first one, three three six. Uh -huh. The first one, Zero point one six seven. Now add the total. Two nine two. Two nine one. Four. So now give me the total. Seven? Nine, seven. Number B of the question. Number B of the question. Mm -hmm. 
find the probability that more than three customers we request for a refund more than three probability that x is greater than three so it's greater than three that means it's either uh -uh, not not at least three greater than three so it's four five six seven eight which is the same as taking probability of one minus zero one two and three so probability is equals to one minus when x is zero so here it is the one two three no that's two this is zero one two we just need to compute for three right so zero it's here we got the probability of 0 0.167 when x is one we got the probability is 0 0.336 when x is two we got the probability of 0 0.294 plus now we compute the last one so it will be eight combined when x is three probability is 0 0.2 raised to power three 0 0.8 eight minus three get five so can you compute this one get zero point then can you add zero point you answer you add zero point seven nine seven what do you get one minus answer zero point zero five you can copy The last distribution, it's normal distribution. Normal distribution. Thank 
normal distribution we like to say that this is the easiest this is the easiest and widely this is the easiest and widely applied probability distribution this is the easiest and widely applied probability distribution probability distribution for stop then right you see that it starts by standardizing it starts by it starts by standardizing the values using the following formula it starts by standardizing the values using the following formulas using the following formula i mean using the following formula z is equals to x1 minus x bar of a standard deviation where what is x1 what's x bar what's that so x1 is a specific value x bar is a mean or the average this is the standard deviation. And then X1 minus X bar is the interval of interest. Interval of interest. Interval of interest. Then you let me say that. Let me say that. The function for this distribution, the function for this distribution is then plotted as follows. Is then plotted, is then plotted as follows. The function of this distribution is then plotted as follows. Is then plotted as follows. So first of all, reason. First of all, reason. That's what you call a normal curve. And a normal curve. Remember, we know that the probability should always equal to one. So if the probability is equal to one, they are divided symmetrically. That means here we have half that zero point five, and then we have the other half. There is equal chances of happening. Then here we have x bar, and the x bar is the average measured with reference to the risk and our risk is the standard deviation. You can show that. Let's assume that X by zero, standard deviation is one. <laughs> Then we have to see that the above curve, the above curve, the above curve is called normal. It's called normal curve. It's called normal curve. It's called normal curve. Since it's divided into two equal parts, since it's divided, since it's divided into two equal parts, since it's divided into two equal parts full stop a normal probability distribution a normal probability distribution a normal probability distribution should have a mean of zero should have a mean of zero should have a mean of zero and a variance of one in a variance of one, in a variance of one. Good. So now let's look at assumptions, assumptions, stroke characteristic of normal distribution. 
assumptions, stroke characteristics of normal distribution. Of normal distribution. Number one, number one, number one, take that mode is equals to mean is equals to median. The mode is equals to mean is also equal to median. Number two, number two, it's a continuous distribution. It's a continuous distribution. It's a continuous distribution. Number three, the height of the normal curve, the height of the normal curve, the height of the normal curve, it's maximum at the mean. 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 Okay. Number four, number four. Normal curve is symmetrical. Normal curve is symmetrical. Normal curve is symmetrical. Uh -huh, another one. Normal distribution are unimodal. Are unimodal. Are unimodal. Good. Yeah, that's what we call the normal curve. Right? So I want us to do some illustration. And how do we evaluate the normal curve? Now, to evaluate the normal curve, we use what we call the Z distribution. Now, can you take out your past paper? Take out your past paper. So you can go to the last page of your past paper. Eh? Or also inside your papers, we have some curve, normal curve. Eh? Now, for example, you can use this one, the one for May 2019, May 2019, the last page, yeah, it's this one. So that one is okay. Normal distribution. We have a lot of tables in that past paper. The one with a normal curve, something looks like that, like this. Eh? For the online student, it looks like that. Yes, you look at something like that. That's what you call the normal curve. Yeah, that's what you'll be using in determining the probability. Good. So let's first of all do an illustration. That is December 2017, question 2C. December 2017, December 2017, question 2C. To see, you are told that, I think you are there. And you are told that a survey conducted on citizen of a certain country to determine the annual per capita income indicated that the annual income of citizen is normally distributed, that's normal distribution, with a mean of 980,000 and a standard deviation of 160, with a mean of 980,000 and the standard division of 160. One citizen was randomly selected from the country required. The probability that the annual income of citizen, number one, is greater than 500, greater than 500. Now this is what you call the number right. If you go on your right, the value will increase. If you go on the lower side, the value will reduce. So in this case, we want greater than 500. Why is 500? Right or left? So 500 will be on the lower side. So we want greater than 500. So greater than 500 
you shade the required part. So how do we get that probability? So Z is equals to X1 minus X bar of a thorough division. X1 is 500. X bar is 980. Standard division is 160. Give me your answer into two decimal places. Your answer should always be in two decimal places for normal distribution. You ignore the sign, just ignore the sign. Negative misses on that one side. You get three point three point three. Just three. So it's equivalent to three point zero zero. Should be into two decimal places. Then you read this one from the table. So now let's go to that curve I have shown you. The normal distribution curve. It's the same, same it's the same uh, sitting. You just go to, at the back. Eh? Question five, there is that normal curve there. Now, this is how you read. We want 3.00. So we have a normal curve here. So there you have the normal curve. So you look at where you have 3.0. Then here you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we want 3.00. So give me the coordinates where you have that. What do you get? 0 0.4987. Eh? Good. So now let's be here. Now that's not the probability. Now that probability we have is between 500 and 980, this probability. But you want it greater than 500. So that means you also need to increase this part and you see that this is the other half. So therefore the probability will be 0 0.5, then you add 0 0.4987 and you get 0 0.9987. Number two of the question. So X bar does not change, it's 980. Standard division we have is 160. Mm -hmm. So part two of the question was, is greater than 1220, is greater than 1220. Now 1220 is greater than this. So here we have 1220, that one becomes X1. So greater than 2020, I mean 1220, that's the required part. So. To get Z, you will take X1 minus X bar of a thorough division. X1 is 1220. X bar is 980. Standard division is 160. And your answer should be into two decimal places. 1.50. Good. Then from the table. Now let's use that table. 1.50. Zero point one two three four three three two. Good, but that's not the probability. Now that's the probability between. Now we have looked at the interval. The interval is twelve twenty and nine eighty. This is what we have computed, and that's their probability zero point four three three two. But that's not what we want. We know that all this is a half. Now we want the shaded part greater than 1220. So therefore to get the probability, you'll take the entire half, which is 0 0.5, you eliminate this 0 0.4332, you get now above 1220. You get 0 0.0668, right? Good. Number three. Number three. So you draw something like that. Uh -huh. So X band does not change, it's 980. Standard division is 160. Uh -huh. Lies between 852 and 1100. 852 is on the lower side. And 1100 is on the upper side. So lies in between. So if it lies in between, that's the required part. So to get the required part in this case, we have to compute two Zs. So Z1 is that's X1 minus X bar of a standard division. So X1 will take 852. X bar it's 980. Standard division it's 160. Then we compute also Z2. Now Z2 now use 1100. So it is 1100 minus X bar, which is 980. Standard division 160. Then you see that you ignore the sign, you ignore the negative. Negative means it's on the lower side, positive means on the upper side, but has no effect on our probability. 
है हो गया एच जीरो है और अब दिस सेकंड वन सेवन सेवन फाइव नाउ लेट्स रीड दिस वन फ्रॉम द टेबल फ्रॉम द टेबल Uh, this one you get zero point zero point eight one eh uh -huh. zero point seven five two seven three four good so now we want to determine the probability how to get the probability now the first one we have computed between eight fifty two and nine eighty eight fifty two and nine eighty. And we have the probability, which is 0 0.2881. The second one is between 11 and 980. 11 and 980. Of which now we have gotten 0 0.2734. So now we want in between 852 and 1100. What do you do? We add good. So you'll take 0 0.2881 plus 0 0.82. No, I mean 2734. You'll get 0 0.5. 56. One five good as simple as that. So now you can copy. So I shall do more illustration during uh, blocks, but I want you to go and try this question. Handout question. Uh, that's page six. Page six. There is an illustration. For normal distribution. So, and that marks the end of that topic of probability technique or probability theories.